Welcome to the round where you have absolutely no air to breathe. The round of eight at Nashville Super Speedway. The biggest wildcard race in this season's playoffs where unpredictability meets reality. Wrecks, blown tires, spins, and much more that determines the upset of the final two securing themselves into the championship four. Joey Logano, who was eliminated in the round of 12 last race at Fontana, finds himself on pole next to the 10 of Eric Almarola, who has found speed at this track, hopefully to bring home a checkered flag that he hasn't brought home in a really long time. Two other drivers that have provided speed at this track is Kyle Busch and Kyle Larson. Expect them to be at the front battling for the lead and go to the championship fort at the end of the day. Ross Chastain is on the other side of the spectrum for having fast cars, but his Clover number 42 is said to be ready when he needs it in the end, outpacing the field, so we've already got something in store waiting for us. I don't think the majority of people expected this. The famed 43, newly formed 99 car, and the forgettable 37 machine starting inside the top 10 fighting for any points they can get before the season comes to a close, with two races left in the playoffs and getting ready for next season's hunt for the title. And you'd think that Chase Elliott would be locked into the finalist round for the championship, right? If you haven't been keeping up to date, he has yet to find a win to secure himself into the championship running at Phoenix, but is currently placed third in points and has always been on top of everyone else's shoulder in season four and has some good runs at this track. I wouldn't be too worried for Chase Elliott but have the back of your mind set for any unpredictability that is upon us. Anyways, before we go racing, let's go sidetrack for the command to get underway. Gentlemen, start your engines! Alrighty, as the cars warm up their tires, we'll run you down the starting lineup. In row one, as we already mentioned, it's Joey Logano and the bacon man of Eric Almarola. In numero dos, it's the 24 of Willie B. Byron and the Stanley man, Kyle Busch. Row 3, Young Money Kyle Larson and the Watermelon King, Ross Chastain. Row 4, it's Brendan Pull in the 27 and the 43 of That Jones Boy, Eric Jones. Taco Man, Daniel Suarez, and Ryan Priest making up row 5. Unhappy Harvick and Recky Spinhouse Jr. Row 7 consists a pair of Hendrick teammates, Chase Elliott and Alex Bowman. We got some meme lads in row 8, it's Kurt Busch who demands for your brownies, and Bruex in 16. Stuart Haas Racing teammates, Cold Custard and Chase Brisket. Row 10, it's Denny Delivers and Corey LaJoy. Next row back, it's Fast Pasa and YRB in the 12. In row 12 belongs to Tyler Reddit and Brad Kislowski. Iconic numbers, the 21 of Matt DiBenedetto and the 3 of Austin Dillon. Row number 14, the 20 of Christopher Bell and the 6 of Rockin' Man Newman. In 29th is Chris Busher and the 23 of Bubba Wallace in 30th. In row 16, the GOAT according to CST31 Racing Network, Ty Dillon and Michael McDowell. And rounding out the last row in row 17, is the 77 of Jamie Mac Murray. The race length is 10 laps. The track will change lanes for running as the race goes on. A straight up wild card already making a statement. And this is the last opportunity to make the championship four in season number four. The final four will be decided. We're underway here at Nashville. Lap 1 complete, now Kyle Larson to the back of the 22. Now he goes low to pass for the race lead, and he does successfully into turn number 3. Reports coming through that Kurt Busch is not too thrilled how the 47 race him, almost taking out. Meanwhile, the battle for second easily grants Brennan pull the position. Logano dropping like a rock. How about Ross Chastain with a great top 5 car is now making his way into the picture, slowly but steadily. There you see Chase Elliott in a hustle getting to the front. Remember, he has not won a race in the playoffs yet. And battling for the halfway bonus, it's Almirola riding the high lane, scoring his second 
halfway bonus win of the season. And Keselowski's in the wall hard. Gets out of traffic's way, causing NASCAR to throw out the caution. From first sight, you see the left front tire quitting on the two car and ending his day in misery. He did not have the car to compete at all in the top 10, but we'll see him next time in Phoenix where he won't be going back to back fighting for a championship because he was eliminated after Auto Club. Next season, he'll be joining Roush Fenway Racing, hopefully to bring better results as he is a winner of the sport and shows great talent. Okay, forget about that wreck. It was out of his control. Here's the 47 and the 1 both starting, restarting on the outside, and Eric Jones just outside of the top 10 putting together a great run for his team, along with Busher, Suarez, and a 37 back in mid-pack, but has knowledge of getting around this track, so we'll be restarting a lap 7 out of 10. And at this point in the run, the track's groove is shifting upwards, so it's going to get interesting as we head back to the green flag. Green flag is back in the air! The 27 using the high lane to his advantage and clears the 10 with Chatson behind him. Oh, Logano's loose off of Elliott, gets turned back into traffic. A huge hit for Stenhouse. Championship contender Byron involved. Busher, the 43, Suarez, Harvick, and Kurt Busch are out. The red flag flies over the flag stands to repair the invisible catch fence that the 47 destroyed. And the 4 of Kevin Harvick continues, did not make any contact, but was stuck behind all that drama. Logano attempted to make a 3-wide pass underneath Ellie and Bowman, but instead made a misjudgment of how much room he needed to give. Saves the car, actually. Tries to get it back into traffic in front of the 24 and collects Stenhouse who got air. What a dangerous hit that Kurt Busch had with the front of his car getting hit head first underneath the front end of the 47. And Busher piles in with nowhere to go. Such an unfortunate timing where you're having a good day, you feel great, and all of a sudden something goes wrong and you're in the garage. The good news for one driver being William Byron is that he's already locked into the championship four after his win at Auto Club. But the only thing that he needed was a consistent run for this race, practicing for the championship practically. Just now needs to put that in the past and focus on what's ahead as you see the 47 getting towed back, joining everyone else as he is the last one to be collected. Now we're under caution paste and here's the replay one more time. Eric Jones and Daniel Suarez who were having a great day exceeding above where the car averagely runs. Um, unfortunately involved in the wreck, Suarez did not want this wreck to end her day as this is Trackhouse Racing's home track and being cut from the playoffs just barely the Bubba Wallace at Sonoma from the round of 16 just increases the wound by putting salt, apparently. I don't know what else to say. I'm not really good with wording what I say. We are going to restart on lap 9 of 10, a two-lap shootout, no overtime. The craziness is upon everyone, and only two laps left to determine who will be your championship four contenders in Phoenix. The cars are rolling again, and the 23 and 11 both spin their tires coming to the start-finish line. Hamlin's chances for going back-to-back -back titles will go into flames at this point. Ross Chastain on the outside passes the 27 for the lead. A huge push given to the 10 from the 9, absolutely trucking for positions. White flag for the 42, championship battle on fire, jockeying for positions. But coming to the front stretch, Ross Chastain will slide off a of four to win his first NASCAR 5-hour Energy Cup Series victory. Redemption at its best when he lost to Wallace at Talladega in Season 3 in 2020 when he was driving for Spire Motorsports, but now claims his first victory. A happy ending for Chip Ganassi as their NASCAR team will shut down at the end of the season, but Trackhouse announced that Chastain will field the number one car next year in 2022. Great race for NASCAR Diecast, returning the 42 car back to victory lane when Kyle Larson did so at Kansas in Season 2 in 2019, now happens again at Nashville Super Speed. Here are the right results, obviously great day for NASCAR Diecast, much needed points. Jay Hugarin comes home second, a valid effort today for the 19. Tim Horton's Cup Series finishes third after losing the first spot to the 42. Gained a lot of points though that will make it his eligibility for making the championship more possible. Next top five for James Holloway, Mark Greer in fifth. 
Pueblo Jova added again this is surprising. He's impressing everyone this season in that 37 mission. Mickey Moody ends up finishing ninth after sliding the tires with Sonic for Life. His driver driving for 2311 Racing finishes 17th. DHH 17 with fourth place finish, which is very good. And LaJoy ends up finishing a race that gave him a better result here in 20 seconds. And now, the point standings to see who made the championship four. Here are your championship four contenders. William Byron, Martin Truex Jr., Brennan Poole, and Chase Elliott fighting for the trophy in field. Unfortunately for Larson, as he was close to getting his teammate, but just short. Same with Alex Bowman and the gift card, including Trudex, Truex, Struggle today finishing the attack. They're going to need to turn things around for the final race. Only 25% of Joe Gibbs Racing made the final round. And here are the rest of your favorite drivers. Suarez falling in 16th, having back-to-back DNF. Chas Hayden bumps up from 26th to 20th. Corey LaJoy scoring more, more points than David Reagan this season, who had a one-off event at Daytona, will now be finishing last in points at the end of the season. Thanks everyone for tuning in to this wild event at Nashville, where four heavyweights this season will go to fight for the title at Phoenix upcoming soon. This is Hendrick Fan 24-7.